everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and let's talk about NAT, PAT and NAT overload. So network address translation, port address translation and NAT overload. And there's actually many types of NAT, but the one we're concerned about is the NAT overload or, or PAT. They're, they're basically the same thing. And it's the type of translation that's being done by your router if you're sitting at home on a cable or DSL modem. So it's going to probably count for about 80 to 90% of my viewers here. So it's a very common thing. And what's interesting here is it's so common that most people don't even know how it works because it's it's common as uh, tissue paper or Coca-Cola. You just take it for granted. So if you have a computer at home, and let's draw out your computer, and we'll use uh, we'll use yellow this time. So let's say you've got a PC at home. And let's say you're rich and you've got not only a desktop PC, but you've got a laptop PC. Life is great. You need some way of connecting this to the internet. So you've got a wonderful Netgear router. Okay, so you've got a Netgear router and that Netgear router probably has four ports for you to connect your PCs to, so life is good. Might even have wireless, doesn't really matter. And that Netgear router connects to your DSL or cable modem. Got a connection out here, so it could be DSL, could be cable, doesn't matter. Uh, could be Fios, if you're lucky enough to be in Verizon Fios territory. And this goes out to somewhere on the internet. Let's say you have found a wonderful site here called, let's say, YouTube. Something you are watching right now. All right, so that YouTube site, it's got billions, I think it's got billions, billions of videos. And you are on your PC and your brother, sister, mother, father, grandpa, doesn't matter, is on the laptop. Both of you want to watch videos. You want to watch videos of uh, scantily clad dancing chicks, dancing women, and your grandpa wants to watch videos of uh, Jimmy Stewart. I don't know, doesn't really matter. Okay, so you both want to go to YouTube. However, we've got a problem you only have one connection to the internet. So whatever provider you get your internet from, you're only going to get a single IP, one IP address. And that IP address could be, oh, let's make one up, 200.0.0.1. Okay, so that's your single IP address. Of course, YouTube has its own IP address, and uh, let's just make it up. 190001, okay, that's not YouTube's address, we're just making it up. Okay, so the problem is we've got a single connection, a single IP address, yet we have two computers on the inside of our Netgear, okay? Another problem is that our two computers have private addressing. That private addressing could be something like 192.168.0.1 for PC1 and we've got 192.168.0.2. Okay, something like that could be another private addressing scheme could be 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.2, doesn't really matter, but we have IP addresses. These IP addresses cannot go on the internet. When If they go to the internet, the upstream provider or even the Netgear router will kill that IP address. So we need some type of way of translating, hint, hint, translating those IP addresses into something that YouTube will understand, also something that Netgear will understand. So what's going to happen is PC1 is going to create a packet. And I'm assuming you know about how TCP sockets work. 
So PC1 is going to make a packet. It's going to have an IP address portion and it's going to have a port portion. The IP address portion is going to have a destination and a source. Okay, the destination is going to be YouTube. The source is PC1. Now for the port portion, so here we're talking about the port. Destination port is going to be port 80. Source port is going to be, we'll make it up here, 5000. Okay, so that's, this is coming from PC1. Now let's say at the exact same time, your grandpa starts surfing on YouTube. His computer is going to make a packet. Same two portions. It's going to have an IP portion and a port portion. Now for the destination, hey, same thing. You both are going to YouTube. For the source, well, it's not PC1. This is actually going to be the laptop. Okay, so that's easy. Now for the port portion, here's where we, it gets really interesting. Destination is also 80. Kind of makes sense, both of you are going to YouTube, both of you are going to the web page, so the source port is 80, or destination port is 80. And let's say, for example, the, the stars have aligned, you know, the moon is, uh, you know, full eclipse or whatever, you know, things have gone crazy, and the laptop also happens to pick a source port of 5,000. Could happen, you know, not that, not that uncommon, especially if you have a lot of computers behind that router. Let's say instead of having two computers, you're in a business where you've managed to cram 100 computers behind that Netgear or Linksys. The chances of two computers picking the same source port, probably pretty high after you surf the web a little bit. Okay, so both of these go flying into the router. And the router has a table. So let's say that's the Netgear. And so what happens is this router makes a table called the translation table. And the translation table hooks on the ports onto the computer that it came from and also where that packet needs to go. All right. So what it's going to do is it's going to listen to IP addresses. So you could think of this as it's making a big Excel spreadsheet. And it's going to say, okay, well, I got information coming from this IP address, 192.168.0.8.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
we have a destination port and then we have what the new source port will be. So this is after the translation. When the packet came from the laptop, it was a different source IP address, the same source port, the same destination port, and it merely changed the source port to 5001. And that is to make it different than the previous source port because both were using the same number. And of course, in this table, it's going to make a destination IP going to YouTube. All right. So now when that packet heads over to YouTube, it's going to look a little different. So those two packets heading to YouTube are going to look like this. IP portion Destination YouTube, that's not too bad. Source IP is no longer going to be the 192.168.0.1, and that's because those IP addresses are don't work on the internet, they're killed. So source IP in our case is going to be the other side of the router, which is 2001. So source is 2001. Port is going to be the same for the first packet. Source port 5000, destination 80. All right. So that came from the PC, went through the Netgear, and then the Netgear translated it to look like this. And now when the second packet goes through, it's going to look pretty much the same except for one slight difference. The destination is going to look the same. It's going to YouTube. The source looks the same, 2001, no, 200, 001. And the reason for that is it's your single connection sending out. The destination port's going to be the same, port 80. But now the source port, instead of port 5000, it's going to be port 5001. So on the other side, YouTube looks at these two packets and goes, okay, well, this is pretty much the same. The IP address stuff is the same. The destination port is 80, so I'm going to take it. But I've got two different source ports. So basically the server is going to think it's two different destinations. When YouTube responds, the packets come flying back towards the Netgear and then Netgear looks at that packet and goes, okay, is it going towards the port of 5000? If so, send it towards the desktop. If it's going to port 5001, then send it to the laptop. So that's how this works. NAT overload. You're overloading one IP address. You have a one single real IP address, which is 200.0.0.1, but you're merely using the 65,535 ports to make multiple connections go through it. All right, so that was a quick and easy video on NAT overload and port address translation. Thanks for watching.